as a follow-up to the Lance Lynn effective velocity article that was done the other day, we're, we're going to do a, just a quick little breakdown of how he uses his fastball. He uses two of them, and he's at about 80%. Um, thanks to the Texas Leaguers graphic, this is um, Lance Lynn four-seamer use in the month of September. And you can see, basically, that he's using it in three different areas above the strike zone, in the top of the strike zone, and then on the outside part of the plate. Each one of these has a very different EV usage. The first one outside the strike zone is called a pressure pitch, and that means that it, it went through the same tunnel, basically. It looked alike coming out of the pitcher's hand, but it made its way just out of the strike zone and into the six inch area all the way around the strike zone called a pressure zone. So when, when pitchers do that, there's a high tendency to get swings and misses or chases because it looks a lot like the strikes that he's throwing. Now the other usage of this four-seamer is at the top of the zone as a strike pitch. That sets up the tunnel that he can throw multiple other pitches off of. Primarily, though, all he's doing is throwing this fastball that comes in, has a little arm side run, and if it stays in the strike zone, it's going to be about 98 EV. If it's the two-seamer, it's going to start in that same basic tunnel, but it's going to end up running more because it has more movement and end up, as you can see, over here in the pressure zone. So the, the use of the, of the four-seam fastball is as a strike pitch when it's in the zone, and it's faster than the, than the hitter is prepared to hit because for 50 years, hitters have been used to hitting pitches that are on the outside part of the plate. So 95 outside is 92. So anything that's beyond 92, 93, 94, when it gets up to this area up here where it's 98 and up to about 101 when it's in this pressure zone above the strike zone, hitters have a hard time reacting to that. That's why you see so many swings and misses um, in his approach. So the four-seamer is used as a pressure pitch above the zone, a strike pitch in the zone, and then after getting guys used to seeing this tunnel, he throws one on the outside part of the plate, and right out of the hand, it looks different because it's in a different tunnel. The two-seamer, on the other hand, looks very exactly the same, in fact, of a great deal of the time, and then has more movement, so it moves to this very inside part of the plate or to this area also, which is, which is a pressure zone. And it's, it's, it creates tremendous pressure because beyond a third of the way, and sometimes even halfway, the ball looks e exactly the same as it did on the four-seamer. So is it going to stay here, or is it going to move inside to this right-handed batter? Because he's standing on this side. So anything in here is going to be up underneath his hands, and it's going to provide tremendous pressure. So the use of these two pitches together, when done right, there are actually multiple different tools that he's using. He uses the four-seamer um, to get chases, swings and misses up here. He uses it out here to get freezes, and he uses it at the top of the strike zone to establish a tunnel and to be faster than the hitter's prepared to hit. Over on this side, he uses this as a pressure pitch. As you can see primarily, or at least half, half the time, this is a pressure pitch, and it's by design. And I think he gets about a 64% chase rate in that area. So it's super effective. And it's super effective because it's in that tunnel for a long time. And when it splits, it splits in underneath the hand, and it's gaining speed that whole time. The only downside to this type of fastball usage is the fact that when he's throwing this pitch at uh, about 98, and then he comes back with this EV pitch at 93 or 94 real speed, but it ends up being 95, 96 effective velocity, there's going to be some crossover. So the sequencing then becomes uh, important. 